Who's the most important 49er now after the data we have from Monday night? No Christian, portions of Brandon, who a good friend told me once upon a time, Niners are not Super Bowl contenders without Brandon Ayuk. You want to walk that one back at all? No. I, I mean, okay. I mean, okay. I just want to ask. Of course. I'm not leading you anywhere. I don't think that they are Super Bowl contenders without Brandon Ayuk. Okay. And so far, you you beat a Jets team at home with Brandon Ayuk ish. Yeah, with Brandon I. Yeah. No Yuk. I mean, it, was probably, it was like a half of him. There was no yak because you had no. to catch it to get yak. It was, there was no you. It was not Brandon I yak. There was no yak. No, it was, it was some yuck. yuck. <laughs> yeah, look at me and you. <laughs> you beat me by a nose. It was. It was. It was. We were both photo there. finish. Um, Rafi and Berkeley. Hi, you're on with Willard and Dibs. Willard and Dibs. All right. Can I? Can I answer? Can I answer your question with a question? I, I sure. I would imagine yes. All right. You what just did, by the way. But anyway, go, <laughs> go, go ahead, Rafi. What, what was Jimmy Garoppolo's record in the playoffs as a 49er? Boy. Uh, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo's one? playoff record as a 49er? Was that the question? Yeah, I can, I'll give you the answer. Rhetorical. Well, okay. Well, okay, uh, okay, go ahead. Five and two. Five and two. Uh, what, is, what is Brock's record in the playoffs as a 49er? Four and two. Now, would you call Jimmy excellent? Um, would I call Jimmy excellent? Jimmy with the 49ers was really good, but I guess the only way I can answer, so, yeah, like the only I got way, Jimmy at four and two, by the way. Yeah, I don't, I don't Upon see the five review. and two. He's five and two for his career, but that counts the uh, New England game where he didn't play. He two, had two kneel downs. Give me the give me the playoff games for Jimmy with the Niners. Uh, beat, Obviously, the Super Bowl loss and the Rams over loss. Over Minnesota, over Green Bay. I remember those. Where he threw it eight times. Right, and then there you was lose the Super Bowl. Hufanga game. Then you next uh, two years later, you beat Dallas on the road. You beat Green Bay on the right, road. Right. And then you lost to the Rams because uh, Kwaski Tart dropped an interception. Yeah. Many people will say. I just Four like to. Rafi, you have a point. I, I, but I bet even you see sort of the circumstantial nature of it. You know what I mean? Like um, they beat Green Bay because of it. They beat Green Bay without an offensive touchdown. Now Brock Purdy beat Dallas with only, I think, 19 points, if I'm remembering correctly. So both of them kind of want a defensive struggle. You You have a point. If I was making this all about his playoff record, which I'd argue I'm not, how's that for a fair answer? I think that's a very fair answer. And I think there's, I think the thing about football is there's always contingencies. It was a, a, an interception that was dropped, a, a not very offensive driven game in the snow. You know what I mean? It's always going to be something. I mean, the difference is I, I just looked this up and, and there's a 20, a 20 point difference in, in their TBR, if you like those kinds of things in the playoffs. Fox is almost 100. Jimmy's is closer to 75. So it's kind of, how they're doing essentially the same record that kind of makes the difference. But to borrow a phrase from our good friend, Ray Ratto, when he was talking about the Warriors, I think the 49ers are an ensemble team, an ensemble. And it's the grouping together that makes them great. And I think you start pulling pieces out and actually, you know, over a season, because, yeah, we just won without Christian and whatever, whatever. But over a season, I think that that's when things will start to fall apart, actually, without any of them. So I think they're all important, important because I do think, again, they're this ensemble, an ensemble that makes them great. <laughs> and thanks, guys. Well that done. was very good. Rafi. Very good, Rafi. John not, Salad. Thank, thank you. Thank not, not, only, ensemble. not only is that a very, very uh, faithful listener to the station, Look, Rafi's right, and I don't know that anybody would disagree with that. What I would say about that, though, is what he's saying is hard in 2024 in sports media to sort of like accept and wrap our head around because that's just not the way a lot of our brains work. We don't want to do that. Well, they're just an amazing team, and everyone's great. It's true. Yeah. It's true, yep. and I think I said off the top of the show – no one would argue the 49ers become a lesser entity with the loss of any of these people, any of them. Of course, they'd be way worse without Trent or Nick or Fred and Christian. 
and Brock, and, and, and we can keep going. Debo and Brandon and George, all of them. So, like, yes, but that marriage that Rafi's talking about, I think, is what people have a hard time with. Like, we don't do this to any of the other marriages in our life. Do you have a couple down the street where you're like, gosh, they just look like they're getting along all the damn time, and, boy, the kids are well-adjusted, and everybody's doing well. We have a neighbor. It's clearly a system marriage. Okay, yeah. Like, do you look at that and go, <laughs> it's clearly the mom? Or do you oh, go? Oh, for sure. There, you, there are those, yeah. You do? Oh, for sure. You there are marriages you look at it and you go, you know what? That that mom or that dad, they're, they're doing the heavy lifting. There's the lesser of the two. But do they sure. have a great marriage? Probably not. Okay, well, then that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a great marriage where you look at it and people are financially making money and they're traveling and they're happy and the kids are well-adjusted and people are doing things together and they're sharing the work and this person's successful and so is that person. You don't look at that family and be like, well, it's Bob. Bob does that. Well, in and every the other marriage, five people that I'm looking at don't get any credit for this. In every marriage, there's a Kyle and there's a Brock. And in this analogy, okay. the Kyle is the one with the better job and contributing more to the overall marriage than Brock. Brock's a great partner. That's interesting that you said Kyle had a better job because I'll tell you which one's no, about to pay more. He's doing a better job. Oh, okay. Well, it's not about yeah. who has a better job. It's who is doing more for the union to use your analogy. Why can't I say... Even if I'll grant you that the percentage tip is in Kyle's favor, but to whatever level you all think Kyle made Brock, why can't I respond to you and say Brock also has made portions of Kyle? If Kyle's output is now better, if, and these are the words of Brian Hoyer, Jimmy Garoppolo used to drive Kyle crazy. And then Trey Lance was drafted, and it couldn't even function. And now you walk out there with the expectation of, well, 30 points and uh, and Super Bowl. And things are like they've well, won. That's what they had with Jimmy. Uh, no, they didn't. They, they got they, to the Super Bowl. They didn't average 30 points a game. True. And, True. And, and, and in the NFC Championship game, he threw it eight times. I'll give you a uh, statistical comparison of those two that I just unearthed coming up in just a moment. You know but, that no no stat you're going to give me is going to shake me from Brock is better than Jimmy. Oh, no, no. This is oh. actually to confirm okay. your belief based on the fact that they've both played six playoff games underneath the same head coach. Okay. And when our last caller, whose name now escapes me. That was Rafi. Thank you, Rafi. He said five and two. Well, he's really four and two. They're both four and two in the postseason. Yes. And Jimmy's thrown for, in those six games, 962 yards. And Brock? 1343. And I'd also argue one of the losses is not fair, and you know why. He didn't play in it. No, but just the yards. Right, and right. So even if he finished that, that game, means, he yeah. might have another 200 yards. You're exactly your right, point. for Jimmy, sure. Jimmy Garoppolo, 60.6% completion. Brock's at 626 mm -hmm. The big one, though, Jimmy G, four TDs, six picks. Brock? Six TDs, one pick. So... It's clear that Jimmy G is not as good as Brock, and Brock has elevated Kyle Shanahan. Well, I'll give I mean, you that. Yeah. And, 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 like, I love what Brian has talked about. Like, one of the keys, because I don't think when I say Brian, Brian Hoyer, who joined us earlier. Axel. Uh, also known as Axel, a.k.a., and uh, a former 49er quarterback under Kyle, who we both believe is very smart on this, has said one of the keys to this marriage is the fact that Kyle got Brock right away. Right. Trey is the only comp to that because Kyle got Jimmy and Jimmy had already been in the oven for a little while. And then as an offensive coordinator, it's different. And I'd argue most of the QBs he got had already, Matt Ryan, been baked for a little while. I don't know about Manziel and all that stuff, but you get to this point and Kyle was able to get to Brock right away and have – Basically, Kyle's brain and Brock's body just go into the oven together and bake from the outset. And that is a big part of, of what you're seeing, which is that Brock will literally go out there and execute what Kyle is telling him to do, which I think the world goes, well, then that's Kyle's credit. I'm like, no, the execution is a big part of this. Right. It's not just the brain, like writing it on paper and then having it happen so that's where Brock comes in. 
And that's a big piece. It is, but it's also the relationship between the two because Brock had never played pro football for anyone else, and Kyle was able to mold him in his image. Brock embraced the teaching, and he's embraced the system. The system is still preeminent and dominant, and the fact that Brock is 100% on board, for me, that's credit to both of them. Absolutely, and oh, by the way, don't forget that when you watch a football game, Kyle Kyle's brain comes up with a play and you love Brock's execution, and I'd argue at least 30 or 40% of the time, that play doesn't go the way it was drawn up. And Brock does very, very well with that. Progressions, ad-libbing, moving, buying time, decision-making. That's all part of this. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, and Odyssey Sports Station, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union for a low-rate auto loan. Apply online or just ask for First NorCal Financing at the dealer. We wanted to get to this, too. I think this is great. Have you heard this now, everybody? Alex Smith going on with Pat McAfee. And I, and I wonder how we could add this to the conversation. Listen to some of this. This is Alex Smith, Pat McAfee Show, ESPN. What makes a great QB? Everybody has an opinion on what makes a good quarterback. I went around and wanted to talk to, to everybody, right? Like, ask Aaron, what, what makes a good quarterback? If you're a GM, who are you drafting? What are you looking for? And I think, like, we've just been off base on quarterbacks, right? Like, it, it, they aren't measurables. It's nothing you can, you can actually gain from the combine, right? Like, I just don't think that stuff matters playing quarterback in the NFL. There's so many things that are not quantifiable. And you have to be able to, like, sit down with somebody, find how they're, like, wired, how they're motivated, right? you got to turn on the film and see what kind of – uh, you know, instincts they have. I mean, w- what I hear him saying is that this, this is way more abstract than we're even able to sort of discuss or quantify the idea of what makes a good quarterback. I, I get what he's saying. I slightly disagree. Oh, you do? And it's, well, I agree in principle, but I disagree with the fact that it's not quantifiable because we did a whole thing last year on S2 cognition, yep. which are the tests that they now give some athletes to figure out how quickly you perceive. I'm looking at it now. Visual learning, distraction control, tracking capacity. These are all quantifiable. They're not the old school measurables of your three cone drill and your 40 and your bench press. This is the new next level, and this is where Brock Purdy really shines. Do you have those numbers for a lot of QBs around the league right now? They don't no? share them. Uh, it's proprietary them. information, but I do know based on you know what they measure, and you can think about the way you're describing Brock Purdy. You use the word improvisation, yeah. and that's one of the things. Uh, decision complexity is another thing that they oh. measure. You know how are you able to make these decisions? Complex decisions when you got you know. 21 other people running around and seven referees. How do you make that decision? Distraction control, uh, search efficiency. How quickly can you scan the field? All these categories, if you thought about it in terms of Brock Purdy, he even Grandy would give him an A in these categories. Well, uh, I don't know about that, but I mean, like, w- weren't there some test measurables, and I don't know if it was S2 cognition, but wasn't the, there was some sort of data that, that C.J. Stroud did not do well with? And CJ's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So like I just and I don't know if it was what you're talking about right here, but I I still as a fan, I have a hard time buying into whatever the testing says because I don't know if we found a magic bullet there. Where it's like if they're good on this, they're good on the field. And if they're not good, right. they're not. I do think it's a combination of the physical, the mental, and also the perceptual. And I think Brock Purdy, if you wanted to rank quarterbacks in quarterback tier based on their ability to do the intangibles, he would be among the top three. Now, Patrick Mahomes is elite at everything. He sees it. Sure. He's athletic. He's got arm talent and the rest of it. Brock Purdy's arm is good enough. It's probably not a great arm. It's good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. His mentals in his game, that's where he has a real separation skill, I think. And, you know, I'm not an S2 cognition expert or a football expert, but we all talk about does he see it, right? Does the quarterback see it? And that was a big knock on Jimmy Garoppolo is as things got tense and the pocket started collapsing, you see quarterbacks, Mark, where their their eyes start to drop and you're starting to look for the safe, easy throw. Brock doesn't do that. No, and I also think, like, we forget this. Okay, a play gets called, you get the football, you're scanning the field. 
we forget that there are somewhere between four to six trained professionals chasing you, trying to disrupt whatever's happening. And that's where I also, one of the reasons I'm such a big Brock Purdy fan is what you see him do both within the pocket and outside of it when it calls for him to go there. Here's Alex Smith again, Pat McAfee show, his assessment of Brock in the pocket, the Brockett pocket. I think he's got the most courage in the pocket than anybody in the NFL. I mean, this guy stands in there and take hits and he is just like unflinching, right? Like his, his focus downfield never wavers. I mean, it's a gift to his, obviously he's accurate, but like, I, I think that poise and courage is something that again, like how do you quantify it? And we're so caught up in size and speed and arm strength and hand size and, and like that. And like, again, none of that stuff I really think matters. Uh, this guy can play ball and he's been playing ball at a high level for a long time. And yet again, he falls to the last pick in the draft. Like how does that happen? Alex Smith with a potty mouth. Well, and that got personal because I don't know if you remember, you might have been in L.A. at the time, but oh, the no. big buzz around here was I remember. Gay those manager. tiny, yeah. no, no, hand size. Yeah, I know. I remember. He had those yeah. little biscuits, and I don't know how big his hands are, but I'm a man with small hands, and I know that tough for me to grip a football, but that was one of the early knocks on Alex Smith. Every time he'd fumble, huh, small hands. Small hands. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So but that's why he swore. Said he's the most courageous QB in the pocket in the whole league. Pocket courage, Mark. Yeah. yeah. And that comes from the ability to understand that this throw that I want to make in .18 seconds, if I can hold it for .17 seconds, it probably will be open. So I do think it plays off of his mental ability to know that, you know, in the moment, if I can just wait another fraction, then I can throw it and I can complete it. And so that's why he's able to hold it. You know, this, this might be the best one of them all. From Alex Smith? Smith. Well, there's one more Alex. Okay. Smith. And this I, I'm going to use as one of my pieces of backing with the idea of the importance of Brock Purdy and how he deserves a lot of the credit for what you see in 49er football games, because you'll hear people, well, Brock's got everything around him. He's got good stuff. Teammates, offensive line, coach, defense, fan base, my gosh, perfect scenario. He's just like a pillow inside of a case. Listen to what Alex Smith has to say about this. Man, he's a baller, man. I don't know how you don't turn on the film the last couple of years and see what he's doing week in and week out. I know it's a good situation, but there's not a quarter, there's not a good quarterback in the NFL that's not in a good situation. <laughs> um, so I'm a huge fan of Brock's, man. I think he's a huge reason why they're so good and, and going to continue to be good. Okay, that line to me is one that I want to keep. There is not a good quarterback in the league that's not in a good situation. Give me an example of a quarterback y'all think is good, like that's a good player, a great player, he's getting things done out there and doesn't have much around him. Does that exist? Who is that? Well, those quarterbacks are normally not thought of as pretty good anymore. And I think about Trevor Lawrence as a guy That's a great who, example. You know, is he a good quarterback in a good situation? Well, doesn't feel like it. Doesn't seem like they have a lot of talent around him. And Doug Peterson as a coach has regressed. And so that is an interesting one. And the other one that I think I'm, I'm fascinated by this year is Justin Herbert in LA with the chargers, because that should be a good situation, but is he going to suddenly become a guy who throws it 22 times a game? Because that's what Harbaugh wants. I, I, I got to get to know the situation more. Totally. You got You got almost a whole new receiving core. You've got new running backs. You've got new offensive linemen. You've got a new coach. You've got so much new, and you're one and zero, so that's nice. Yeah. There wasn't anything special statistically, but that's okay. Like I, I, I don't know enough about that yet. I also look at Atlanta, like okay, all of these. I was told that Atlanta is a great situation. That's a quarterback away. That's all that was wrong there. You got good receivers. You got a good tight end. You got all these things. You got Bijan Robinson. And now you're getting a new coaching staff. You've got weapons, and you bring in Kirk Cousins. Is he a shell of his former self coming off injury? Maybe. I don't. I don't really know. But I look at that and I go, okay, you're 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 in a good situation. You should have good output output. If you don't, 
yeah, maybe maybe the injury is still playing a really big role on what's going on with you. Yeah, and to Alex's point and his comment, it is totally that. A good system and a good quarterback, they have to go hand in hand because Kirk Cousins carved up the Niners last year. He looked pretty good before the injury, and now he's in a situation that should be better, but so far so bad for Atlanta. Xfinity Mobile text line 650 says, C.J. Stroud last year. I'd argue that's not a bad situation. We just didn't know it was a good situation. But D'Amico Ryans is a really good coach. And it turns out that Nico Collins and Tank Dell and all these pups we didn't know, they can play. Yeah. That was a good situation. Even and, better now. And he gets a lot of credit for that. Absolutely. 